Bismillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. My dear beautiful people, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. This is your brother Abdul Salam Abu Hanifa. In today's pep talk, I want to talk about people who allow themselves to be trapped in the past. Pay attention, I said who allow themselves to remain trapped in the past. There is not a single human out there that hasn't gone through a bad experience. Perhaps one day you went to buy a pair of shoes and the salesperson was nasty to you. Well, you still wear shoes. You just go and buy them from somewhere else. You don't rebel against buying shoes and suddenly start walking without shoes, right? Or perhaps you go to buy some food or clothing or a car or television or anything. When you have a bad experience in a store or with a person, with a salesperson, what do you do? You just go to some other place. This is the smartest choice. Yet, some people choose to remain trapped in the past. For instance, somebody got married and, uh, with their previous husband or the previous wives, and usually this happens a lot with women. They remain in the past. The husband did this or the woman, the wife did that. And suddenly, they create this threshold where they judge uh, people with, for instance, you want to get married to this sister or to that brother or to this gentleman or to that lady there. And then you dump on you, this is what my ex did. Or they interact with you based on their previous experience. My question here is, why do you choose to remain trapped in the past? Perhaps your parents were not good to you. Maybe you had, had some discrepancies, some bad times your father. Why do you keep dragging that into now? Do you know the past does not exist? It actually doesn't exist, not at all. Let me tell you some other things that do not exist. It's us humans who give them a meaning. Love. As much as Hollywood has made of this word love a God, that people crave it. And hatred, they do not exist. It's us humans who give them an entity. For instance, when you eat your favorite food, do you love the food? You're going to say, yes, I love it. No, keep this thought in mind. And then you have a beautiful cat. And you love the cat. Do you love your cat? And you go, yes, I love my cat. That's absolutely awesome. But do you actually love the food the same way you love your cat? The obvious answer is no. Now, why did we use love in the food and love with the cat? You meet somebody and uh, you go, sorry, I don't have a connection. I don't have this chemistry. So suddenly the compatibility between you and the other human comes based on a chemistry. But what is exactly chemistry? Is that your sexual attraction to this person? Sure. But that, is that love? Can we actually qualify that as love? What is love? How does Islam look at love? There is a universal reality is love is like water. It's essential, but it actually doesn't have a taste, it doesn't have a form, and it doesn't have a color. It doesn't even have uh, an odor. We can't smell love. Love does not exist in reality, but what exists is, is how the other person makes me feel. They make me feel good. They make me feel I like something about them. That's something that attracts me. What we say is here is something in the other person takes me from where I am now and projects me into the future. And in the future, it's good. And then the brain looks at that message, produces the hormones needed, and you start feeling the future now. You get sexually aroused. Is that based on the past? Not at all. Is it based on now? Not at all. 
it's based on the future. You are in front of somebody and you feel attracted to them sexually and that somebody is your wife or your husband. And then as soon as you feel that attraction, the brain translates that attraction into a sexual signal, produces the hormones, and suddenly the chemistry in your body changes. So you see, we all live in now to the future. Every time you go back to the past, you have chosen and allowed yourself to get trapped in the past. Sure, people are here to hurt you, but does that mean you're going to quit living? Islam doesn't look at these things from the angle of the past. That's why we leave the past to Allah to deal with. We move on. We don't have something called holding grudges. We don't have something called uh, we hate that person. Listen to this beautiful story that took place at the time of the Prophet Muhammad A man, a Sahabi, a companion, comes through town, through Medina, through town. In his hand, he's grabbing another man, another companion. He's got him by the neck and he's pulling him extremely angry. He stands in front of the Prophet. So here we are three Muslims. The man, the one he holds, and the Prophet. And the other companions were watching. Gobsmacked, what the heck is going on here? Why is this man grabbing his brother? Rasulullah asks what it is. Why you are doing that? The man says, this gentleman here killed my brother. And I want to kill him. The Prophet tells him, forgive him. Look at the beauty of Islam. Forgive him. The man says, no, I don't want to forgive him. He killed my brother. I want to kill him. A soul for a soul. The Prophet turns to the man and he says, have you killed his brother? And the other man, being a companion, wouldn't lie. And he said, yes, look at that beauty. Look at that beauty he could have denied there. But he did not. Because honesty always takes you the extra mile. Perhaps not today, but later on it will pay off. Then Rasulullah, the Prophet, looks again to the man and he said, Release him and Allah will reward you well. The other man says, This is my right and I want to exert it. I want to use it. And then the Prophet says, Okay, I leave you to it. And then the prophet and the other guy took the other guy to kill him. The prophet turned to the other people, to his companion, and he says, If he kills him, he is a murderer. If he kills him, he is a murderer. You are a murderer, it's just it happens you do it for the good for the right reason or for the evil reason. In the end of the day, you are a murderer. There is nothing called when you kill someone just because you killed him for being an evil, it's a murder. And when you kill someone when you, for good, you are not a murderer. You both In both situations, you are. And uh, when the man was walking away, he heard, he overheard Rasulullah saying something. He heard the Prophet saying something, but he couldn't exactly say what it is. And then one of the companions, those who heard this, ran and got to the other guy and tells him, do you know what the Prophet said about you? And the other one said, no. What did he say? He goes, if you kill him, you become like him, a murderer. And the man looks at the other man, and he goes, I don't want to be a murderer. And then he turns to the man and he tells him, go, I forgive you for the sake of Allah. Go, you are free. And then he goes back to the Prophet and he tells him, Ya Rasulullah, I don't want to be a murderer. Look at that beauty. Look at that beauty. It's easy to stay in the past. I sit here and I can tell you 1,000 things about why I can hate my father or my mother. But actually, what all that they did that is in my eyes now an evil thing. And I'm sure if I go back there and I have a whole inquiry, I will find that I deserved it. But it's easy to forget. If I am now today, I can tell you every reason why I should hate my dad. But actually, 
the way I am today, I actually really, really love myself. I, I love myself. And I love every bit of me. And this is not an arrogance. It's just an appreciation. And I know who I am. Everything that my dad did, either good or in my eyes today, bad, has helped to what? Shape me in the beautiful person that I am today. You got to stop blaming your past for who you are today because today you have full choice. You can say, heck with the past. Animals can do it. Why not humans? Anyone who tells you, oh, my husband, my ex-husband did, straight away see them in a box called the past. We don't have something called the past. We all learn from the past and we move on. People are in two categories, my beautiful people. And let me tell you this. Some people use the past as a school, a college, a university. You've been there, you graduated, you studied, you graduated, and you take the lessons from the past and you move forward. Cool. I applaud you. Some other people treat the past as a mosque, as a club, as a library, as a market. They keep going there every single day. And these people will live a miserable life. Show me a happy person that is still living in the past. That's why my brothers and my sisters, I give you this beautiful advice. There is no such thing as one rule that happened in the past is going to go forever. It's your choice. Mankind is the only one that can live 10 years with a lifestyle, wake up one day and suddenly decides to live the opposite of the other lifestyle. Only mankind can do it. The goose or the geese always migrate south in winter. They cannot change that. Allah didn't give them that opportunity. He didn't give them that option. The salmon always goes back to where he was born to die. That's in his, that's in his destiny. He does not have any other choice. My question to you is, why do you blame the past for now, knowing that now you have every option to be the best of who you can be? Islam will not put you on pedestal because you live in the past. Islam will put you on a pedestal for what you are today and what much good can you bring in the future. I'll go back again to the first issue. Sure, 10 people have betrayed you in the past. I have been betrayed a few times in my life by Muslims. If I count today Muslims to non-Muslim ratio, how many Muslims have betrayed me and how many non-Muslims have betrayed me, Muslims win hands down. And it's a staggering, scary figure. And I'm sure you can relate to that too. So the question is, where I am going with my life? Your life is not what you have lived. Your life is what's left to live. And what's left to live is beautiful. Look, every single morning Allah gives you 24 hours with bursting opportunities. Go make your day. So, why choose to stay in the past? Why tax me and tax yourself and tax the other one with your miserable experiences? Learn from them and move on. Henry Ford said one day a beautiful sentence. He said, if I asked people what they wanted, and this is back in the 18th, 19th century, he said, if I asked people what they wanted, they would have said faster horses. The guy was extremely smart. He looked at the past, horses. How many, car, how many horses do you need to pull a cart? Four horses, five horses, six horses, eight horses. The coach, stagecoach. And then what he did? He invented the car. And so that he links people to a beautiful past, he named the power of the engine horsepower to give an idea of people how to move into the future 
by using the beautiful past. Until today, we still go to the house power. Sometimes the figure is phenomenal, but we still use it. So my question to you, everyone that is listening to this pep talk here, what is stopping you from letting the past go and say, heck with my past, these people that I've known are just teachers. They taught me lessons. Now I want to use these lessons and move forward. Until and until then, you do these things, you will always live in the past. And I will end on my talk with this one saying this. Before you clean your room, it's a mess. Once you clean it, it becomes the past. But it doesn't become the past. Once you clean it, it is your now and leading to the future. Why do you choose to be in a room that is clean, yet you keep living based on a dirty room, messed up room? That's exactly what you do. From now on, just see, not every human out there is horrible. Not every experience out there is horrible. Not every opportunity is horrible just because it happens in the past. No. The past is a school. When I go jogging, I tell myself, last week I ran this truck in an hour. Today I'm going to do it in an hour and ten minutes. And then I go and do my hour and ten minutes and I feel good about myself. I don't say to myself, last week I ran it in an hour. <sighs> I've got to keep running it in the hour just because that's how it happened last week. It angers me to no end seeing a beautiful human with all abilities and capabilities and full potential wasting their lives in a box called the past. It's gone. Move on. So today's pep talk is stop jailing yourself, imprisoning yourself in the past. Use now to take off. And I pray to Allah to guide us all to the best guidance. Islam is a beautiful religion that speaks about the now and the future and tells you to forget the past, learn from it and move on. That's why when our Prophet went back to Mecca 10 years later, he didn't live in the past. He didn't pinpoint to Quraysh, to his tribe, what they did evil. He just says, I forgive you, move on. It's time to move on. It's time to move on. It's time to move on. I pray to Allah to give me a beautiful day and to give you a beautiful day, to give us what it is that we deserve. But since it's not going to fall from the sky, you tigers, just get your clothes out and go get it. It's yours. It's just waiting. It's waiting there. Be happy, you deserve the best, and you are the best that this world deserves. Feel good about yourself and move on. Again, this is your brother, Abdussalam Abu Hanifa. Telephone number 0787640 Just send me a message, inquiry, comments, everything is good. I love you all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.